Hi, I'm Brad Rex, the former vice president for Disney's Epcot theme park, and you're listening to the Coaster Challenge podcast. Hi there, I'm Lee Cockrell. I'm the former executive vice president of Walt Disney World, and Mickey Mouse was my boss. And you're listening to the Coaster Challenge podcast. Do you accept the Coaster Challenge? Yes, I accept the Coaster Challenge. Do you accept the Coaster Challenge? Coaster Challenge Podcast is here. It's time to face your fears. Get that theme park therapy and let us both through. Coaster Challenge Podcast is here. Your fear can disappear. We know that theme park therapy can dry up all your tears. Do you accept the Coaster Challenge? Yes, I accept the Coaster Challenge. Do you accept the Coaster Challenge? We accept because you know we're not average. You're listening to the Coaster Challenge Podcast. A journey where people become fearful to fearless, all from riding roller coasters. So please secure your hats and glasses and keep your hands and arms inside the podcast. It's time to accept the Coaster Challenge with your host, Kim Dykes. Hi, this is Kim with the Coaster Challenge podcast, and I am honored to sit down with my guest today. I am glad to welcome Don Hurd, an Indiana Beach enthusiast, historian, and current vendor at the park. Thank you for talking with me, and welcome to the podcast, Don. Hi there. Hi, Kim. Uh, Hi. And Coaster Challenge fans, it's really great to, to be on your show today. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's just, I love spreading the, 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 the gospel about the coasters and Indiana Beach. And uh, I'm just tickled to death that, uh, to be here today on, on this podcast. And again, I'm honored to, that you invited me to come on. Well, I am so excited to talk to you and get to know you better and hear your story. I first met and talked with you at Indiana Beach. I could tell from our conversation that you have quite a story to share. Let's begin with you telling us about yourself and how you became so closely affiliated with Indiana Beach. Well, it all started back in 1978, and that's... (laughs) So I'm a lot older than a lot of your uh, coaster challenge uh, listeners probably. That's but, when I was three years old. You know, but uh, I now was 78. I was I was a senior in the, at college at Ball State. But uh, um, I came to Indiana Beach to work that summer at um, in 1978. And and lo and behold, what I did all summer is I ran the Galaxy roller coaster all summer long here at Indiana Beach. So I became very familiar with the. Uh, the coaster, uh, the Galaxy Coaster at Indiana Beach, because it was at that time in 1978, uh, that was the only coaster that Indiana Beach had on the park. And again, you know, it was it was a pleasure and an honor to be able to run. Actually, people who called the, who ran the coaster, they called them Coaster Kings back in the day. Cool. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and and back in the day, 1978. You know, we didn't have uh, uh, automatic brakes per se, especially coming into the station. Uh, the station that was all manually done. Stopping the car was all manually done. So we had like a uh, a, a large uh, uh, metal handle uh, mm-hmm. attached to the uh, the track below, and as the cars came in, we had to squeeze the handle really, really hard yep. to, to to pull to to uh, stop the car coming in into the station and and if it, it would ever happen to be rainy or kind of slick that particular day sometimes the uh, people got an extra ride they slid right through the station and, and oh my right. goodness <laughs> it was fun but um, again we never had any accidents per se yeah. you know, in the uh, on the coaster even though it was uh, a very elementary uh, design the galaxy coaster was back in those days but my gosh, it was a fun coaster back in 1978 to ride, and and our line was always long, you know, uh, with that. So, uh, so 78 was really my, my first exposure to Indiana Beach. I'd always heard about Indiana Beach. I'm originally from Warsaw, Indiana, which is in the northern part of Indiana, and I always wanted to go to Indiana Beach. And and lo and behold, in 78, I was working there, and. We worked our tails off. We worked probably 80, 90 hours a week. Uh, wow. And then we, we would we finish our day around 11 o'clock, midnight, 1230. A bunch of us, we'd go swimming in the lake for a little while, probably have a few beers afterwards too. And then and we'd go to sleep for a few hours and get back uh, on the horse and do it all again the next day. That, that was really fun. So uh, 
So that, that was my first exposure to Indiana Beach and to coasters. Actually, the Galaxy Roller Coaster uh, was actually my first coaster I ever rode back in that day. And, uh, okay. uh, you know, back in, uh, I, I was always, you know, the fairs, the county fairs back in the day didn't really have roller coasters and things, you know, uh, at, at the county fairs. But the Galaxy Roller Coaster was my first coaster that I rode. And, boy, I was hooked after that. I, I loved the thrill of that, you know, and and the excitement and the exhilaration and the endorphin mm -hmm. rush that you get when you when you're riding in a coaster it's just it's just amazing it's just an amazing thrill an amazing ride and and hearing your story and hearing oh, wow. david's story you know it's just amazing that the the uh, coaster therapy or, or who would have known coasters can be a real cure for people who overcome some of their anxieties you know their oh, fears yes. and, and provide them with confidence and those type of things you know that and then what you're doing here on the Coastal Challenge, you know, to provide that as a resource, that, that's a great, that's a great outreach you guys have provided to a lot of people who may not, you know, who may be scared to death to ride a coaster. But like, like David was talking, you know, he never rode a coaster until he was later in life. And, and now he, he's hooked too, you know, and mm -hmm. your story is amazing also. But you know, my love for Indiana Beach started back in 1978 and it's continued ever since then. And, uh, both my children worked here at Indiana Beach over the years, and, uh, and I stayed in this area here at Indiana Beach around Monticello, Indiana, in White County. And I've been here for over 43, 44 years now, and uh, I, I wouldn't change it for the world. It's just it's been a great ride here at Indiana Beach. And, and later on, I, I was able to become the uh, vice president of marketing here at Indiana Beach and made a lot of difference with that and, and bringing the sparkle back to the park also. I don't know if that answers my question, but once I get talking about Indiana Beach, Beach, uh, I get my role then. So, well, your passion for Indiana Beach just shows so much <laughs> when you talk about it. And I mean, it sounds like with all the work and things that you've done at the park over the years, you've never actually worked there a day in your life. Uh, no, it, it's fun. I mean, when you when you enjoy what you're doing, and that's yeah. the that situation. If you enjoy what you're doing, you know, it's not work. It, it, it's a it's a passion. It, it, it you know it, it's what you want to do is what makes you happy. It's what mm -hmm. makes you happy right here, you know, and right here in your heart, you know. Absolutely. And being here at Indiana Beach, it's my happy place. You know, I know it's a it's a happy place to a lot of other people that come to Indiana to the thousands of people that come to Indiana Beach. And we have had people here coming, you know, for decades. They have families been coming here for decades at Indiana Beach. And you know, it started back in nineteen twenty six, the park did. Mm -hmm. And now we're coming up on our hundredth anniversary, you know, and you know, back in 2020, we never thought we would be here because when Apex decided to close the park, you know, you know, there was a big outcry and, and a lot of tears were shed that mm -hmm. day in February uh, 18th of 2020 when they decided to that. And, and everybody didn't, they were just in shock. And the, the, yep. You know, the IB Nation was just in shock because, you know, what was going to, what was going to happen with the beloved Indiana Beach? And, but, but lo and behold, we had a, Knight in shining armor, you know, come up uh, riding, you know, down uh, uh, Indiana Beach Road and, and save the park with Gene Staple. So yes. it's been a good ride so far with, with Gene. And Gene's a very, very good fit for the park. And, uh, and he's in here for the long haul. And, we, you know, he, he's, he's, you know, he's, he reminds me of Mr. Spackman, who whose family owned the park back, you know, for over 80 some years, the Spackman family. And I remember Tom Spackman very, very well when I back when I worked back here in 1978. You know, he was always hands-on with the park and always uh, had his little notebook out making notes about things that need to be taken care of. And at night, he would walk the boardwalk and, and look at the lights and see which mm -hmm. lights were out. He'd make that note in that in his, uh, in his um, uh, notebook, you know, to get those lights fixed. But uh, now it's back to being a family-owned park, which is wonderful. This is what this park is all about. It's a family-owned park, a family fun park along the, uh, the lake of uh, Lake Schaefer here in Monticello, Indiana. And we're looking for many, many more years to come to have some excitement and, uh, and, and still continue to build those family memories for people. Yeah, a couple of connections I can make with what you said. You're talking about operating the Galaxy Coaster. You've, you're, you've got to do something I've always wanted to do. I've had the opportunity to ride two. Really? Of those hand cranked mm -hmm. right. coasters. Yeah. I rode one at uh, Camden Park and there was another one at the Cincinnati Zoo. Really? And you know, and I saw I saw the guy cranking that brake. 
Yeah. Like if I could just do that one time in my life, that would be so satisfying. That was always fun. Uh, uh-huh. And the other thing about that too is each morning we had to oil the track. Okay. Ooh, and, okay. And what we had to do, we we take like a, a bleach container. We have oil in it. Had a, had a little hole in the lid. And mm-hmm. we have to ride in the back seat of the coaster. Then we lean over the side of the coaster, oiling the wheels and the track. Oh, wow. We're, we're going around the track, oiling the track with, with our hands down below the uh, around, around the wheels. And then we have to do it the, on the other side then, too. So each morning we had to oil the track and oil the wheels. And you talk about the, and you couldn't do that today. I mean, OSHA, uh, you couldn't do that no. today. You know, back in the day, you know, that's what we had to do every morning. We would inspect uh-huh. the wheels, and then we always had to go out and oil the track. And that was always a treat to, uh, you know, uh, oil the track. You know, you just lean over. And you're riding, you know, but you're trying to watch where the oil's going to and make sure you hit the track and the wheels. But uh, that was part of our job, part of our routine every day to do was to oil the track and make sure that, uh, you know, it, it, was, it was a smooth sailing for, for people to ride. And and again, again, the Galaxy Coaster back in the 1978 was a great coaster, and, mm-hmm. and people just loved that. And we, like I said, we had lines, you know, uh, all the time, you know, for for wanting to ride the coaster. And it was a double double car uh, uh, ride too. But not just right now what we got here. We got the Cyclone. It's just a single car ride. Mm-hmm. Back in the day in 78, it, there were two cars that went at the same time, you know, for people to ride. Well, they say you learn something new every day. That's my new <laughs> fact of the day. That you <laughs> the all track, oil yes. the tracks by hand. That is so that cool. Was, that was, that and was, you know, something to do. looking back at 2020, I was so upset because, you know, I told you about my friend, John, that kind of brought me into the coastal community. Right. Indiana Beach as a park John's been going to since he was a kid. Sure. And I kept, oh, yes. And I kept hearing, you guys have got to come to Indiana Beach. You guys have got to come to Indiana Beach. Right. And it's actually become a meetup place for us because they live in Illinois. Uh-huh. And I, we live in Kentucky. <laughs> so we're actually able to meet up at Indiana yeah. Beach. It kind of hits, right. you know, the middle for us. It's a little closer yeah. for them than it is for me, but it's not that far, yeah. much further of a drive for me either. But I was so upset when I saw that we had planned a meetup. And in a beach for, for me to go the first time. That year. Okay. And I saw the part being sold. <laughs> no, <laughs> this cannot yeah. be happening. I'm not, I'd heard all these stories from him. Yeah. About yeah. the park. Yeah. And, you know, when we first finally got to go, the park is such a gem. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's, it's like a, all of the other parks, you know, I go to are, you know, they're modernized. The tallest, the fastest, you know, the most innovative coaster designs, you know, that are coming out. Indiana Beach is just like a little walk back in time. It's so nostalgic and it's a different atmosphere. Mm -hmm. You can relax. There's no neat reason or need to rush around the park. There's plenty of time to be, you know, to to do what you want to do at your leisure. Sure, and I just, you know, it, it brings back vibes to me. My family used to go to Kings Island once a year when I was a kid. That was my amusement park experience. Right. It takes my mind back to those years when I was younger. That's just sure. what I see a lot, you know, that it reminds me of. And, and it's it just feels- a very happy atmosphere for me. It still does that to a lot of people. And like, you know, I, I started the History Museum here at Indiana Beach, and uh, uh, people come in and tell me their stories about, you know, how long they've been coming to Indiana Beach. I met somebody the other day, and they've been coming since 1959, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so generations and generations of people who've been coming, you know, year after year, you know, they came as a kid, then they brought their kids, then they brought their grandkids, now they're bringing their great-grandkids mm-hmm. to the park. And that's, that's one of the nice things about uh, the retro park like this. I mean, the park from one end to the other is only a quarter of a mile you know yep. so you're not going to get lost you know you're not walking you know tremendously you know a lot and 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 the width of the park is is not it's, it's less than you know a couple hundred yards you know so so you're not you know doing a lot of walking back and forth but you still cover a lot of ground and the lines aren't really that long even on our busiest days you know people don't really 
have any problem getting on rides and, and being able to ride them over and over again. Too. Yeah. And so, but you know, the park, it, it does have a, lot, a great nostalgia feel to it. You know, uh, you know the, it's called the boardwalk, the, the boardwalk, we, have, we still have some boards, you know, that people uh, in the middle of the boardwalk, you know, to still give it that, uh, that New Jersey feel, you know, from the boardwalk there. And uh, uh, again, the people just love this park for what it is. You know, it's, it's not, it's not the biggest, best park in the world, but like I say, it's home. You know, it has a homey feel to it. You know, and people feel really at, at rest here. They feel at peace here. They feel they can relax, you know, and they just have a great time. And again, a lot of them, they don't worry about the kids. You know, they, they let them run back and forth in, in the park. You know, they don't have to worry about, you know, a big mega park or whatever. You know, they don't know where the heck. Because being only a quarter of a mile, you know, long, they're going to run into the kids one way or another, you know, you know at some point, you know, at the park. And uh, it's just, it's, again, it's just a, a great nostalgia feel. You know, people come in, a lot of things have changed, but a lot of things have not changed here at the mm-hmm. park, you know. We still have, in the kitty land, we still have some of the, the cars, the kitty cars that we have here are back from the 1950s still, you know. So uh, but the, 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 a lot of nostalgia there. And a lot of the adults, they rode those cars back when they were a kid, you know. So mm-hmm. they get a kick out of being able to, uh, share that experience you know that, that they had when they were uh, a little toddler or or, 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 or a, a youngster and now they, they're sharing it with their grandkids and their great grandkids so but again we're just real happy that the park is still surviving and still expanding i mean you know this year we added the uh the, the cyclone coaster which i call the baby galaxy coaster you know it, it's, it's it's a little bit smaller than the galaxy coaster it's, it sits on the on the pier that's out over the lake, you know, where the uh, mm-hmm. galaxy coaster was, and it fits really well into that uh, footprint there. Uh, then this year, you know, we're, we're working on trying to finish up the uh, the triple loop, you know, that we've got yes. that started here at Indiana Beach. And and in a park this size, it's pretty amazing. Once the triple loop is done, we're going to have eight roller coasters here at Indiana Beach. And that's amazing for a park our size, you know, uh, to have eight roller coasters. Coasters, you know, you know, from the you know, from the Hoosier Hurricane, you know, to the Cyclone, to the Hornball Express, you know, mm-hmm. the, you know, the Steel Hog, and it's just amazing that we've got all of these fine uh, retro type coaster coasters. You know, we got we got wood, we got steel. Yep. You know, we, we've got it all here at Indiana Beach, and if you want to ride a coasters, you know, uh, we've got a plethora of coasters to be able to ride, and, and don't have to wait, you know, two hours in line to be able to to jump on and have some fun. And it's not just eight coasters. It's eight coasters that you're not going to find right. any place else. So, you know, that's something right. that I look forward to each time I, I return is the authenticity of the ride experience. And Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, in the rides, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the Hoosier Hurricane, you know, it, it was one of the first wooden roller coasters that had been built in, in Indiana for over 50 some years. You know, when it was built, you know, at that time it cost like four point million, four point one million dollars to build, and and that was a big investment for the Spackman family back for a private family to spend four million dollars on, on a wooden coaster. You know, that was a big thing back in the day. You know, and and now here we are. You know, I can see it right now from where I'm at. You know, I'm in the history center right now here, uh, doing this podcast, and I can see the, the Hoosier Hurricane poster right over there, and uh, it's. It's just, it's just a nice coaster and, and really appreciated the Spackman family foresight, you know, and looking toward the future that, you know, having a coaster like that is going to bring more people into the park. And that's what it's all about. You want more butts through the gates. And by adding yes. new things, you know, new flares here and there, you know, that gets more people coming into the park. But again, we have a lot of things here that people remember. We have a lot of new things that need to be tried. There's a great park, you know, you want to kind of over, overcome your coaster fear. And we got coasters here of different sizes. You know, you can you can try it. You know, try a small one and then work your way up. You know, to a bigger one. You know, yeah. but like yourself and and David. You know, building that confidence up in, in coasters can do that. You know, that's wonderful. I know when I I love coasters and when I get on the coasters, I I scream like a little kid. <laughs> I, I just love it. You know, it's just that yeah. just that adrenaline rush you get. You know, and you, and, and it's fun. You know, and when you get off, it's like that. Yes, it's that exhilaration uh, feel you have, you know, all over your whole body. So, yep. Dang, I want to do this again, you know. Absolutely, you know? yes. It comes habit for me is what it does. It comes habit for me, you know. And I've seen, I've watched, you know, I've 
not that I stalk you on Facebook, but I've seen your some of your 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 uh, travels on Facebook. Oh yes, I'm everywhere too. So yeah, all over the place. I mean, the places you go to, I, I really really admire and I'm jealous. You know, because I'm <laughs> I'm stuck and I got to work every day. You know, since I got four concession stands here at the park, plus I own 22 newspapers in Indiana also. So I, I'm pretty busy. My motto is "Don't die until you're dead." You know, so I absolutely keep trying, keep trying new things here and there. You know, but. Uh, it, it, again, I, I'm just enjoying life like you and David are now enjoying mm-hmm. life. That's that's wonderful. I give you guys thumbs up and kudos for what you guys have done and what you're doing and what the Coaster Challenge is doing. You know, for the for the thousands out there who are, are coaster enthusiasts, and yeah. it, it, Coaster Challenge is a great resource for for those people. Well, thank you for that. I have the li- liberty of having summers off because I'm a school teacher, uh-huh. so. I, I typically hit it and hit hard through the summer while the sure. getting's good. All I've right. got a, I have a couple more trips coming up. I'm going to go um, Labor Day weekend and we get a fall break at the end of September. I might do some more traveling, but sure. during the school year, I tend to slow down more. I mean, I'm, I stay at parks that are closer to home sure. on the weekends, you know, with my son having a job now, I don't know. How much during the school year I'll be able to get out, but that's nice right. because he's saving money for next year's trips. And with inflation, I'm not going to argue with him about that because no. um, we need him to help out as much as we can if we're going to be able to keep doing this. So you're instilling you're instilling a good work ethic in him, and that's what I've seen. But working out here at the park, you know. The work ethic in a lot of the younger kids is just not there. So if you're able no. to steal a good work ethic son, kudos to you again. You know, to oh, do thank that. You. You know, so uh, we've got a few good ones here that are great, you know, but it's just that just that generational switch, you know, mm-hmm. and then other opportunities to do other things. You know, back in the day, Indiana Beach was the place to work in this area. You know, if you wanted mm-hmm. to find a job, the park was always hiring. And I, I would like to take, you know, I'd like to know how many college degrees uh indiana beach has helped to uh, su- uh support over the years because people come here in the summertime and, and work and also we have a lot of teachers that came to indiana beach in the summertime to work here also so i mean indiana beach has been a great place to work it, it's helped a lot of kids you know achieve their goals and aspirations of going to college or going to technical college and doing that and plus it, it's, it's been a great resource for a lot of teachers to be able to you know um uh, earn extra money, you know, in the summertime, you yes. know, uh, or, or when they're off, you know, for, for summer break and things. But mm-hmm. again, Indiana Beach has just been a great partner and a great resource for our area here in White County and Monticello, Indiana, just a great partner. And it's really great to have Gene Staples, you know, to be, you know, a great partner with, with the park and with the local community and, and continuing those traditions like, like he's doing. Well, and that's one I've I've noticed Gene when I've been there on more than one occasion. He's not the type of guy that seems to be sitting behind a desk telling people what to do. He's out in the park. Right. He's not just out in the park. He's working in the park. I've seen him working at food stands and different things. And, you know, those are the type of leaders that are the best are not the ones, you know, that sit and look down and tell you what to do they're they're in it with you <laughs> and he seems to be very much an integral part of the community and work you know with yeah. people and be he has what the in. park he needs is, to get it to, to where he was, he, you know he to has it. and he's uh he's, he's one of those people that doesn't sit in a ivory tower and pontificate you know he, he's mm-hmm. out there working you know, along with people, I saw him out here the other day. He was uh, he was uh, uh, washing and and doing the uh, scrubber for the sidewalk and for the yes. for the boardwalk. You know, mm-hmm. He works in, in the concession stands, you know, and you know he'll drive the train. He'll do some of the rides then too. So that's what you want in the leader, yes. you know, yes. like. And everybody looks up to that too. You know, he's he's doing things. He wouldn't ask you to do something that he wouldn't do himself. Yeah. He really yeah. would. You know? and, and, I, and that's kind of the cloth I am too. I don't, all my employees I have, you know, I wouldn't ask them to do something that I wouldn't do myself. And that's what we got here with Indiana Beach is Gene. Again, he's very committed and in, in, in continuing the traditions here of building family memories, you know, with this 
kind of a blue collared part along this mm -hmm. beautiful lake of Lake Shaper here in, in Monticello. Okay, so let's go back to coasters for a moment. Okay. You told me that the Galaxy Coaster was your first coaster. Right. And I admit I'm jealous of that one. I never got to ride it, and it sounds like a lot of fun. What would you say, out of all the coasters you've ridden, is the one coaster that has scared you the most? Scared me the most? Wow. There's been a lot of them. <laughs> There's been a lot of them. Or one of the coasters that scared you the most. Oh, I mean, I, oh, gosh. It, it, you know, the ones that, oh, the ones that, uh, Cedar Point, you know, Kings Island, they got some really good coasters there, you know. But the one I just recently that really has kind of scared me to death was, I was at uh, Disney World and at uh, Animal Kingdom, and I okay. uh, went on the uh, what the, uh, uh, the Expedition Everest one, you know. And I got to a certain point, I didn't know it was going to go backwards. Oh, uh, I went, holy crap! It's going backwards. I don't like going backwards on okay like that. And that that did that really scared me. That you know going backwards. And again, talk about screaming like a little kid. I was screaming like a little kid going backwards, but but I survived, you know, I yes. survived and I got, I go, wow, what, that was something else, but I didn't go back on it. <laughs> <laughs> that's one I've, I've ridden a lot of coasters, but that's one I haven't ridden yet. I've yeah, not okay. been into Disney yet to ride yeah. coasters. I've been to Florida a couple of times. Yeah, I've been good. to I've, been, I've done SeaWorld. I've done Islands of Adventure Universal. I've done Busch Gardens, Tampa. I've done the fun spots, but Disney, I think, is probably going to have to be its own trip. Probably, oh, you know, I, at yeah. some point in time. I, I you know, I, I admire you. I mean, the, the places you have gone. Oh my gosh, I, I just, it just amazes me all the places you've gone and what you I, try to pack, what you try to pack into your summer vacation. Yeah. I've had have fr I've had friends that have taught me how to do it in a cost efficient way. Sure, because there are definitely tricks. Yeah, that um, make it easy, easy and doable. And I swear, though, every single time I think <laughs> summer calendars full, I'm like, oh, yeah. oh <laughs> you do this right here. Yeah, you do that. Yeah, no, yeah sure. Why not? Mm. So well, again, and again, what you're doing and 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 the the uh, you know the, the trials it, and tribulations and the things you've overcome, you know. Um, again, I just applaud you and that. It's just amazing. Oh, thank you. It helps me to, when I go back to work, to mm -hmm. be refreshed and renewed. You know, right. I'm getting ready to start my 24th year wow. as a teacher. And, you know, my school, I'm going to, I'm going to be in my 19th year of my school. This is inner city Louisville. We deal with a kid, a very highly traumatized student population sure. yeah. that comes with a lot of baggage, Right. you know, and some days are definitely easier than others, right. but I have to be the calm in the storm. Right. I can't be flipping my lid sure. every right. single time a five-year-old does something they shouldn't do, right. you know, yeah. and that's, it helps me just, you know, start each year fresh, start each year new right. and right. get in there ready to be what the kids need me to be. You're being, and, you know, and keep a fresh mindset where I'm always learning new things. You're kind of a mentor to them too, you know. If they, if you're able to convey your story to them and things you've overcome, you know, yeah. they can definitely overcome that stuff too, you know. So they mm -hmm. kind of look up to you probably and probably kind of idolize you and what you've been able to accomplish and what you do in your life. Oh yeah, and they've seen that a lot of them that have been around for a few years have seen me literally drop mm -hmm. a person right oh, absolutely. off of myself. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. I've, you know, I've got a big support system behind me, behind yeah. me, but, and the kids too, yeah. they think it's awesome. And yes, sure. I share stories and, but it's very important because it helps them see me mm -hmm. as not just some, you know, mean old lady telling them what to do, right. but, you know, yeah. as a human being mm -hmm. that has a reason right. for telling yeah. them to do what I'm telling them to do. And once they see purpose behind it, they understand that yeah. I'm teaching them and right. that I care about them, mm -hmm. you right. know, and that, you know, what I'm doing for them is in their best interest, Absolutely. Absolutely. even though they may not realize it in yeah. that exact moment. A couple of years down the road and they thought, 
you know, I know I now understand what you're talking about. Yeah, and the switch does flip. It yeah, comes so you, on. And when I make those breakthroughs, right. even with the most challenging kids, yeah, I'm like, yes, yeah, this yeah. is why I'm here. Yeah, you know, this is why I've lived to see another day. You're planting those seeds that hopefully they'll be able to cultivate later on. You know, yeah. so that's good. That's really good. Okay, so going back to that scary coaster, I think you said it was called what, Everest. Yeah, uh-huh. expedition yeah. at Disney. How were you feeling when you approached the station for that coaster? Oh gosh, and it, <laughs> nervous, jittery, you know, because uh-huh. uh, uh, <laughs> you never know what you know, things just run through your head, you know. Mm-hmm. And, Do I really want to get on this thing, you know? And and yeah, and but again, you don't want to look like you're a chicken and turn around and go back, you know. So you want to yep. try to put on a brave face, mm-hmm. you know. And, you down the queue line to get onto their coaster, but a lot of things go through your head. You know, what am I going to do? Is my life insurance paid up? You know, those type of things. You know, mm-hmm. it's just and and, and, you, and you try to self talk yourself that I can do this. I can yes, do this. I can overcome yes. this. You know, it's just, it's just a coaster. I can do this. You know, and again, you know, once you get on there and get get buckled in, you know, it's, it's like anything. Get on there and enjoy the ride. Mm-hmm. Just enjoy the ride, you know, on any of these, yeah. whether it be a galaxy roller coaster or whether it be, you know, a kitty one or whatever. Just get on there and enjoy the ride, you know, for what it's worth, you know, and yeah. and, and make the best of it. So mm-hmm. what you can, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And and tip anticipation, you know, scared, you know, uh, butterflies in the stomach, you know, but that's all part of it. You know, mm-hmm. that, that's part of it part of the thrill you know, that that's part of the the experience you know and if you go through life not experiencing things like that you're gonna have a pretty darn boring life you know and you, you got, <sighs> life's not boring life should not be boring you know you need to get out there and enjoy it and, and what you just uh, said yes coasters you know get your butt in the seat get strapped in hang on just scream bloody murder mm-hmm. and have fun with it you know i've just found this whole i call this like the next chapter of my life you know mm-hmm. and people ask are you are you having a midlife crisis have you gone crazy i'm like no <laughs> i've just found this whole other dimension of life right that i didn't know existed mm-hmm. and this this part of my life is just getting started right you, you turn the page and you start a new chapter yes and That's- I'm just, you know, I'm excited to see where it all goes. And, you know, and you're talking you. about chickening out. That takes me back to what my first big scary coaster. I was with a whole group of classmates at Kings Island for Vortex. And I was legitimately scared to death. I had just been told growing up that coasters were scary. I was going to fall out and all this other stuff. I had all the nerves, all the knots in my stomach, the lump in my throat. I mean, you name it. But I could not have been the only one out of like 50 some kids not riding. Like, Mm -hmm. you've got to do this. You're never going to live this down as long as you live. At least that's how you feel Mm -hmm. when you're a teenager. And pretty much, probably the majority were feeling the same way. You know, mm-hmm. on the, on the and when I finally got on it and wrote it, uh-huh. my reaction was, what lies have these people been feeding me all these years? That was actually fun. Right, exactly. Yeah. And I wanted to do more. That, that's, that's exactly right. So you overcame that fear, which is wonderful. Yeah. Uh, it opened a whole new door for you mm-hmm. that was scary. and that was be- that was still when i was just riding coasters here and there for fun right. nowhere near yeah. about what i do now <laughs> so when you got off of the everest coaster uh-huh. how did you feel when you got off the ride oh i felt wonderful i mean it made me feel like i accomplished something you know even though it overcame my fear because even though you know, I, I don't like going backwards in coasters, you know, but I, <laughs> so I kind of pat myself on the back that, you know, Hey, I did this, you know, I, I overcame that, uh, you know, that, uh, the anxiety of not, not wanting to go, but I did it anyway. And then getting off and just thinking, wow, 
that was something else. You know, I, I did that and get, not everybody can do that, you know, and not everybody rides that and feel that way. And it just felt good. It felt, I felt uh, energized. I felt mm -hmm. energized inside, felt kind of an endorphin rush, you know, that yeah. this felt really, really good to do this. And, and, and I, I think my, I had more spring in my step as I got off the yes. car, and got out in the park, you know, into the park more. And it's just, it was just fun. So I felt good about myself mm -hmm. to accomplish that and saying, you know, you know, Don, you did okay. You did okay there with that, you know, and so go on and go to the next bigger thing, you know, do something else, you know, that, that you want to, that you're afraid of, but go and do it, you know, and, and, and again, when you, when you do it, when it's all done, said and done, it wasn't that big of a deal. You know, you, your mind plays a lot of, a lot of head games with yourself, you know, and, 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 and telling you that, uh, you know, don't do this, or you got to, you know, on one shoulder, you got somebody telling you not to do it. And over here, you show yourself telling you to do it, you know. Both of them are kind of throwing mixed messages up here. But, you yeah. know, just overcoming that and, and, and just taking that step out there and doing it, you know. It, the old saying was, you know, you can't get the second base with your foot on first, you know. Oh. So you got to just go and, go and do it, you know. Yeah. And, 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 and in the long run, you'll be so happy that you did. You really would. That reminds me of an uh, interaction I had with somebody in line during just our last trip, we were at Hershey park in line for, we were getting ready to get on candy monium. And there was this boy standing behind me. Oh, he was sobbing his eyes out crying. And I couldn't figure out if the mom was like forcing him on the coaster or what was going on. Cool. And I just kind of stood back and, you know, I didn't want to appear to be listening, but I was listening because I'm really not for forcing kids on rides before they're ready. But anyway, she said, my son really likes your shirt. And I actually had on the same shirt that I've got on now, my, my Fury 325 shirt. Mm -hmm. So I looked at him and I said, oh, have you ridden Fury? And she said, No. She said she, he's, he's an enthusiast, but he's never ridden one. Okay. <laughs> he watch he does, my son has autism, and my son used to do this all the time. Mm -hmm. He watches, her son watches the same coaster POVs over and over and over again, religiously right. on YouTube. He's fascinated. He knows every major coaster at every park, backwards and forwards from these videos, but he's scared yeah. to death to ride them. So I gave him that talk that, you know, well, kind of like what you were just saying. I said, after you ride this, you are going to feel like you are king of the world. Absolutely. I promise you. Yeah. Absolutely. I said, I said, once you get off, I said, you're going to, I said, you're going to tell this stuff. You're going to want to tell everybody, you know, All I right. did this. I can mm -hmm. do anything. Right. You know, exactly. And I just really, you know, talked to him, mm -hmm. pumped him up, got him to start crying, stop crying. Yeah. And um, I told him and I said, I guarantee you, I said, and I, you know, told him a little bit of our background stuff too. I said, once you get off this ride, I said, your response is going to be, I'm going to do it again. I said, and even if it's a little, and I, you know, I kind of told him about the time, air time and stuff it produces, you know, you're going to feel like you're coming out of the seat. That's what the ride's designed to do. It's perfectly safe, you know, trying to ease his nerves off a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, and if you're anything like me, I said, after you get off the first ride, I said, you might still be a little scared. So you're going to just want to keep riding again until it's not scary anymore. Yeah. I said, then it's just fun. Yeah. And I did see him down the Photoshop after he got off. Yeah. And he he looked a little stunned. And I said, how'd it go? You know, did you like it? He said, <laughs> not very much, but I'm going to do it again. You know, there not you very go. much. I'm going to do it more That's until it gets easier. But, you know, <laughs> his mom was so thankful. She said, she said, I, she, she was just so grateful. She said, it's like, you were just in the right place at the right time because right. I don't think he would have gotten on it if you hadn't talked to him. 
Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that really, <laughs> that made me feel good. You're in the right place at the right time for yeah, you. Man. I'm able to help that child. So after you rode your scariest coaster, would you say that it impacted your life after riding it? Well, it, it made me feel I accomplished something, you know, and it made me feel that, you know, if I can do that, there are other things I can do, you know, that, that, that I think are scary or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. so by, by doing things in baby steps or whatever, you know, and, and taking one step at a time, yes. you know, uh, it, it gives you that confidence. And when you got that confidence built in yourself and you feel good about yourself, I mean, there, there, there's, there's so many things you can accomplish in your life because, because you feel confident about yourself and, and you want to do different things. You want to go to the next level, you know, uh, so, here we did this. Now let's go do this. Let's go do this next. You know, so when you got confidence, you can do anything. I mean, you can do anything, and you can overcome those fears. It's just, just being, just taking that leap of faith, taking yep. that one step. You know, taking your foot off first base and 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 go. Uh, it just gives you such a a good feeling about yourself and self worth that hey, I did that. You know, what else can I do if I believe in myself? Mm -hmm. That's what happens to a lot of people. They don't believe in themselves. They, they, they stay in this one little rut, you know, and they don't yes. think out right or left or whatever, you know, so they, they stay in this one or left and they got some boring lives. But you have that confidence inside you. There are so many things you, you can accomplish. That's how Absolutely. When I, when I do like that. It makes me feel good about myself. Yep. What else can I do, you know, to, uh, to, you know, break down some walls or break down mm -hmm. some, uh, uh, stigmas or whatever, you know, so it makes me feel good about myself and helps to build my self confidence when I overcome something like that, that, that was a fear of mine. You know, and what you just said too, really resonates with me throughout. And, you know, it's not, not just with, with coasters, but with weight loss and, uh -huh. you know, trying to get myself healthy and fit. Sure. One thing I've had to learn too is not to listen to people that are right. stuck in those ruts. Yep. Because they'll just bring you down and make you doubt yourself. You know, I had people tell me throughout weight loss, you know, I <laughs> a few, you know, a couple of times. Right. Basically, you're just wasting your time. Your body's never going to go back to what it was 20 years ago. Yeah. I'm like, well, I'm at the point of no return. I'm right. going to find out. You know, and just one by one by one, yeah. the look of shock. You, you did great. And, and dismay. Well, there's, like, there's so many of those. You did this. Yeah, there's so many of those negative Nellies out there. Yes. You know, that that, that want to place that doubt in your mind. Mm -hmm. Because they want to keep you at their level. Yes. They see you blossom or mm -hmm. and your. And trying life. to make me think that I'm mentally ill or crazy for riding all of these coasters because they're not brave enough to do it. I mean, there, I'm sorry. That's your loss. I mean, there's different, <laughs> different therapy for different people, you know, Yes. for this group here, you know, getting on coasters and overcoming those fears like that. It gives, again, it gives you that confidence that you can, you can accomplish any, if you can ride that coaster, you know, what else can you accomplish in your life, you yeah. know, and, and your life better, you know? And, and again, like you spreading that gospel, spreading, helping that guy in line, who, the kid behind you, it, him meeting you, I bet really helped boost his feeling about what his was doing yes. and made him overcome some of those fears. And I, so. and I shared with him too, you know, my kids and how they used to be and how scared they were and what they're doing now. To right. try to help him realize the fact that you're scared doesn't right. mean there's something wrong with you. Right, exactly. It's normal. It's okay. Right. And, you know, that really seemed to be a, uh, I guess, a, a light bulb for him as well. It, 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 it resonated with him, you know, and it made him think. And it turned the, it turned the switch on to him that, you know, it's okay, you know. Yeah. I'm going to be okay when mm -hmm. I write this, and again, I'm going to feel much better about myself when I do write this. Yes. So, looking back through 
all of the coasters you've ridden over the years, what would you right. say has been your craziest moment, either on a coaster or in an amusement park in general? Well, I'd say probably getting stuck on a coaster. <laughs> that's not that's not fun, <laughs> you know. You get an evac. But, that sounds like fun to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that or not. Yeah, getting caught on a coaster. I remember one time, you know, <laughs> there was a coaster that uh, uh, in a park, actually here in Indiana Beach, a coast, one of the coasters I wasn't riding at that time, but it got stuck on a track. And, you know, that's just normal. You know, it, it happens. You know, you don't like it to happen, but, you know, every once in a while it does happen, you know, and that's just part of the business, you know. And, uh, uh, but again, today's coasters are so safe. You know, there's so many yes. safe things, you know, that, that, that people shouldn't fear them. You know, they're very, very safe. You know, they got to pass so many inspections in order to be, yes. you know, to be signed off on to, for people to ride them, you know, as, as, as many times as they do. You know, and people don't realize, you know, the coasters are mechanical and it's like your car. Sometimes things do break down, you know, and so getting stuck on a coaster, you know, once it, it was a small coaster I got stuck on and, uh, it, it was just weird, you know, here you are stuck on this coaster and I got to wait for people to come and, and uh, uh, evacuate you off the coaster. You know, so that's probably been the most weird thing, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I've been in the business long enough that I know it does happen. And again, uh, the people, the maintenance people and the right operator, they're all trained professionals. They, you know, they know how yes. to work with, uh, you know, uh, uh, safety issues and things along that line. And again, there's so many protocols involved, you know, in, in making sure everybody is safe, you know, with uh, riding coasters. And, you know, if you really look at it, the number of coaster rides that happen every year, it's just minuscule, you know, Absolutely, of any, any yes. injuries that happen, you know. And, uh, and if it does some, some if, you know, if, if a place doesn't have the protocols in place, you know, for maintenance and things like that, you know, they're, they're just asking for trouble. But now, all the coasters in the major theme parks and here at Indiana Beach were very, very meticulous about making sure maintenance is, is number one and safety is number one for, yes. for our guests. We want to make sure they have a pleasant experience. Um, that's one of the things, and I know this is sound weird, I'm still chasing is to get an, a full evacuation credit off of a coaster. <laughs> the only evacuation I've had, it was actually at Indiana Beach this year on the uh, Sky Coaster. The sky, oh, the, okay. the extreme sky fryer right. when you drop. I got uh -huh. up to the top and I pulled a rip cord and it wouldn't go. It wouldn't go. No, oh, no. So they had to lower me down, head me out, raise me back up again. But I'm like, that's the only EVAC credit I've got. <laughs> and it, it was so strange. We were down in Texas at Six Flags Fist in Texas. Uh -huh. We were sitting on Iron Rattler and it stopped. Almost at the top of the lift hill, it stopped. And I was on like my 15th ride of the day on the thing, rode a bunch of times. There wasn't really anybody at the park that day. And I'm like, yeah. is it going to happen? <laughs> we sat there for like 20 <laughs> minutes. All these yeah. people were scared to death. Sure. And I'm just up there and I'm like, somebody come up here and let me walk down those steps. I was, like, I was ready. I get my. <laughs> And I was just That's crushed crazy. when the ride finally started moving again. Like, uh -huh. I'll go home early, whatever they want me to do. Just so so let me come down the steps one time, be a dream fulfilled. That that and to get a roll back on top oh, <laughs> yeah. roll back on top to old Greg's or King to call one yeah. time. Uh -huh. Those are things I've not had happen yet. I'm patiently waiting for. I've been stuck on a brake run before, but that doesn't count. Really? Okay. I need uh, to. I need to be somewhere up. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the other people's biggest nightmare are my biggest dreams. Yeah. I can't explain it because you know, like, strokes different folks. That's all. Yeah. Is. Well, I mean, I but I have faith in the parks. I know. Sure. You know, I would never want to do it if I didn't think there were protocols in place. That would get me off the yeah. ride safely, but yeah, I don't. Exactly. I don't yeah. worry, like you said, because I know people, the risk of getting really in the car to drive. And I know the risk of getting in the car to drive to the park is far greater than any risk that I'm going to experience on any ride in the park. 
and a lot of people don't understand the the uh, number of hours that go on behind the scenes before the park opens, you know, to make sure the rides are safe, you know, from the ride operators to the maintenance people, uh, you know, they go through so much training, you know, even in the off season to learn how to make sure the rides are safe for our, our guests day in and day out, you know, and, and they do that, you know, and uh, it's, it's just part of the, part of the routine of them uh, making sure that the, you know, the guests are safe. And again, back to in all parts, you know, all parts, the number one uh, rule is make sure it's everything's safe for our guests. Yes. All right. So going back to coasters and in the time capsule, looking at all of the coasters you've ridden, what is your favorite coaster? Okay. I mean, it, trying to uh, figure out your favorite coaster is like trying to figure out who your favorite uh child is sometimes you know so they, they all have their different dimensions on what's uh, what's fun and and what's uh you know what thrills you the most you know uh but again uh i really like the uh, uh the rock and roll roller coaster at disney world the, the aerosmith one that was that was a fun coaster i love that coaster a lot uh of course the classic one you know that that's been uh Probably a lot of the first coasters the people that rode was Space Mountain there at, uh, at Disney World. That's always a fun coaster to ride. And I know you're not really a Disney person, but for me, that, that, uh, that's, that's a fun coaster. But when it gets down to it, the basics, you know, the ones I had the most fun with, the one I had the most memories with is, is that Galaxy Roller Coaster back in 1978. You know, it's just, it's just a fun coaster. It, it did have any real bells and whistles, but gosh dang it, it was just a fun coaster to ride and, and, and to have fun with and, and, and create a lot of memories back then. So the, the, the classic one is, is to me is that, is that Galaxy Roller Coaster at Indiana Beach that I rode you know, back in the day. It's just a fun coaster to ride. And again, I have so many memories of that coaster over, over that season. And, and, I know, and I know thousands of other people do too. And, uh, but Galaxy Roller Coaster has probably been my favorite one, even though it's, it's not a lot of bells and whistles. It was just fun, you know, yeah. what I have my most memories of. Not that I don't, you know, some of the other coasters that I've ridden over the years, you know, are, are fun and great, but one that really comes back to me all the time is just that Galaxy Roller Coaster. Okay. Now, I know you said, I think we were talking earlier, you know, it's, it's like trying to pick one best friend. It's hard to pick just one. Right. I have finally, after all the trips I've taken for a long time, it, my son used to make fun of me. I had like a top six. I couldn't rank any coasters. Yeah. Uh, you know, other than the top six, because there were so many good ones. Right. And now I finally got myself, I've ridden 342 so far. Oh I finally God. managed to pick a top 20. Really? But I still, I can't, there's too many good ones. <laughs> And right exactly. after that i'm like it's still too gray i can't you know i can't pick so i, I get what you were saying with you know trying to pick just one right. and i you know i don't really know if i'm a disney person or not. i just haven't been to disney i've only i was only at disney one time on a band trip when i was in high school and we were in such a rush and everything was so fast i don't really remember that trip Right. So right. I do plan on going back. Good for you. One of these days. Yeah. It's it's on the list of places to go. Right. It's just more one of the more expensive things that we'll have be we'll be oh, doing yeah. when we go. It is absolutely expensive. Yes. Yes, it so, is. So I've been holding off on that until I knock off more of these cheaper places, you know, where I can get more bang for my buck and that sort of thing. Good but Disney you. is on the list of places we're going to visit. Good for sure. you. <laughs> so out, you talked about some of the coasters you like. Do you have a least favorite coaster or some that you just didn't enjoy? Oh, I not really. I mean, they all again. They're they all they're kind of like they all have a different temperament. You know, the coasters do. You know, and uh, uh, probably the one that I don't like, I didn't like the, the most, was really. Uh, um, uh, the, the one coaster here is not one of my favorites, but a lot, a lot of people ride it, you know, is the, uh, is the Cornball Express here at Indiana Beach, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I, it's a good coaster. It's a, it's a fun coaster, but 
this wasn't my cup of tea, you know, but a lot, it, yeah. and it's, it's had a lot of people ride that over the years. And, and, uh, and I think maybe it needs some, some track that work done or whatever, you know, yes. uh, you know, over, over the years, you know, coasters do take a beating, you know, they do need some repairs here and there, but it's not cheap either, you know, to do, uh, to do track work. So okay. uh, I think once it gets some track work done, uh, it, it, it'll be fine. But, uh, again, it's still a fun coaster to, to ride people around here at Indiana beach. You know, people are, always have a, a good experience with the, with the coasters we have we have here. Just again, each one has its own temperament. Each one has its own attitude. Each one has its own different air time. You know, it's just whatever you like. You know, and, and with me, the Cornball Express is probably not my favorite one. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say it's my least favorite, but it's just not one of my favorite ones to ride. But uh, uh, it does give me a still a rush and things, but. Everybody has their own temperament. What they like, what they like in a coaster. Do they like, do they like fast tracks? Do they like a lot of airtime? Mm-hmm. Do they like, you know, a lot of curves? Those type of things. It's just, just whatever you know, what your personal tastes are, you know. And for me, the you know, the cornball is not one of my favorites, but you know, I do ride it. I do ride it still. My grandson, he he makes me ride the coaster, and I I still I still scream like a little kid when I ride that coaster. Yeah. So, so it's fun. Well, one thing I can say about cornball is it's it's grown on me over the years in a way. Uh-huh. My friends that we meet up with from Illinois, we have what's called the cornball family. Every time they have a meet up in Indian Beach, they want to do the cornball express marathon. Yeah. Well, you know, when I first started riding that thing, it gave me a headache. I'm like, I don't know yeah. how I'm going to be able to marathon this. And one of the things I've learned through my travels and riding coasters right. is if I don't enjoy a coaster, it might be because I don't know how to ride it sure. properly. Uh-huh. So yeah. I've learned different riding styles for different coasters. Good for you. And um, last year when we did our Indiana Beach, our Cornball Marathon, we did Corn- I did Cornball Express 38 times. Oh and my- the way I figured out how to do it is I put my feet against the panel of the seat in front of me and I push up. So my bottom is not actually in the seat. Okay. And yeah. it prevents that brain jarring. Uh-huh. Sure. And okay. I keep my hands up and my bottom doesn't sit down. So my brain's not rattling right. and I'm fine like that. Well, see, you, you're you're the coaster enthusiast, like someone who's ridden over 300 some coasters. Yeah, it's, you have to figure out how to ride some of them. I'm I'm still a novice compared to you yeah. in, in, in riding coasters. You know that I just go there to have fun. You know, yeah, but, it was just a trick I figured out because I didn't want to. I wanted to do the marathon with the group, but I wanted it to, to enjoy it. Right. Exactly. Like I can't keep riding this many times, or I'm going to have a horrible headache maybe the next time i get the the cornball i have to put my feet up against there and get my butt on yeah Yeah. (laughs) it's the same way i ride voyage in holiday world because people complain about the lap bar dropping down and stapling you okay i've got my leg i keep my leg up under the lap bar i use my thigh yeah hold it up sure i keep my feet the same way i do on cornball and keep my behind out of the seat so the lap bar doesn't drop down so you you can do a whole podcast on these little tips about how yeah. to, you know, and it makes it makes a fun ride. Yeah, it does. As if that thing drops down and stables your lap, it hurts. I don't want that sure. to happen. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you've already told me about your history with Indiana Beach. Uh, you right. said that started back in 1978. Correct. Um, what are some of the contributions that you've made to Indiana the Indiana Beach community over the years? And what do you what do you feel are the most significant contributions that you've made? I, I think probably one of the biggest contributions I've made for Indiana Beach, you know, and I think a lot of people would agree is, is my enthusiasm for Indiana Beach. You know, I, I'm a good uh, cheerleader, you know, for Indiana Beach. I want people to come here and, and experience, you know, what the, what this park is all about. I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, this park is, is, is very dear and near to me. You know, it has a lot of memories for, for me, personal memories that I have, you know, and, and I want to be able to share that with, I want these memories to be shared with other people, you know, for them to create their own memories here and have, have, have some good things, some, some good stories to tell, you know, years to come. And, and 
in getting more people uh, to know about Indiana Beach. I'm very active on my social media. We're taking photos for Indiana Beach, and, and I, I bet I've taken probably 50, 60,000 photos of Indiana Beach, you know, and, and posted those up on different websites and, and, and uh, Facebook pages to let people know how much fun people are having here at Indiana Beach, you know, and, and, mm-hmm. and they see these photos and people are saying, it looks like a really a fun place to go. We need to go there, you know, and mm-hmm. so we want to keep that momentum up and, and, and keep promoting the park, you know, so I've, I think probably the biggest thing that I've um, contributed to Indiana Beach and, and, uh, and the Indiana Beach community is, is my enthusiasm and wanting to share, you know, uh, the, the fun and excitement that Indiana Beach can, can bring you and your family for, for generations to come. Well, and, you know, for me, when you talk about for generations to come, as I get older, and I'm sure you're experiencing the same, th- the same thing, too. Mm-hmm. One of the things that helps me, you know, want to get out of bed every morning and be not just be good enough, but be my best is having experiences like that, mm-hmm. that take me back in my brain to when I'm younger, you know, sure. when I was younger, oh, yeah. those carefree times. You know, when you, you know, when you hear music per se, right. but when you get on that roller coaster, it just takes you back oh, absolutely. to yeah. that time in your life where the stresses of adulthood, you know, and that sort of thing <laughs> weren't a thing and you were just carefree and it just, it helps keep my mind. It, it keeps you young, Kim. It, it does. Young. It keeps you young. So to me, age, age is an attitude. It's all in your head. You know? Yeah. And uh, people say, you know, with my enthusiasm, I seem like a lot younger than what I really am. You know? Yeah. And, uh, but you get, you know, age is an attitude. If you got a great attitude about life and about what you're doing and things, you know, you're going to act younger. You're going to feel younger. You're going to have a lot yes. of enthusiasm about stuff. It's like yourself, you know, and your mm-hmm. class, you know, your, your, your students, they probably feel your enthusiasm about life. Yes. Now, yes. now you've had a metamorphosis about you, you mm-hmm. know, see that and they say wow you know she, she's a great teacher she makes me feel you know i, I want to try to achieve some of the things that get, get, she has done you know yeah and, and so, i i hear teachers complain about oh you know the kids and the parents and i'm like look right, right. two things you're not going to be able to change you cannot change the students that are in your classroom they're this is, you know you're we're drawing from the same areas of Louisville that my school has always drawn from right. and you cannot change the uh, parents, you know, what the parents are going to do or not going to do. You cannot control other people. Right. Um, but you know, the only thing you can change is yourself, mm-hmm. your attitude. Right. And that's going to be the make or break agent in most situations not just in a classroom, but you know, in an amusement park visit, amusement park visit, your day to day life, your attitude, right, and what you bring to the table into this world mm-hmm. is going to be largely dependent upon, you know, that's really going to be the key factor in your quality of life. If you come to the table with stinking thinking, as, as Zig Ziglar said one time, you know. Yes, you're, you're going to have a stinking life, you know, so you got to you got to wake up every morning, you know, and 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 be thankful that you're able to get up, you know, and, and yes. get things and and and, and, uh, and to enjoy stuff and experience life, you know, and uh, again, I what I, I, I do a lot of speaking of the college kids and, and for students and things, you know, mm-hmm. I said money's nice, but it's not the number one thing in the job. If you're not happy no. with the job you're doing. Get out and go do something. Mm, absolutely, because you're making you're not just yourself miserable, but everybody miserable around you. Absolutely. And yeah. I was always been work to live, don't live to work. Right. Absolutely. That way you're able to be happy. Yeah. And um, yeah, because if you're not happy, you're just gonna make everybody else miserable around you too. So uh, yes. change the attitude, you know, and do something that you enjoy. Mm-hmm. And, love to experience and, and that, that you're feeling you're making a difference, you know, in, in people's lives and in your life too. And, you know, something too, I, you may have seen on Facebook where we were in a pretty significant car accident back in June. Yes. And 
I mean, walking out of that accident, that was a, that was a come to Jesus moment. Sure. I was going about 80 miles an hour on I-71. Mm-hmm. This lady had a front driver's side tire blowout. Wow. wow. Yep. She slammed into my back passenger side wheel first and start. I started spinning. Right. And got the car back around just, long, just in time to see her coming towards my front end. Oh my God. And she slammed into wow. my front driver's side wheel. Thank God she hit the wheels and not the doors. Right. Absolutely. And I started spinning again. <laughs> and somehow everybody, the woman included, walked out of that accident. I mean, I was on, I was at over Kentucky Kingdom the next day on Storm Chaser. I wasn't on really? any, any pain, any pain of any kind. Yeah. Not a scratch, nothing. My kids were fine. Very and, important. Yeah. And I mean, close to $10,000 worth of damage on my car. I mean, this was a doozy of an accident. Yeah. And yeah. Um, well. I, my attitude is <laughs> I'm thankful that I get to get up and look what I get to go do today. I get to go to work. Right. You know, I get to serve the purpose that I'm clearly still here to fill. Because right. God's not done with me yet. I right. listen to people complain mm-hmm. that they about what they have to do. Right. Be grateful for what you get to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah. if you're not grateful for what you get to do, mm-hmm. find something <laughs> yeah. different yeah. to spend your life doing. Absolutely. That that you that, that, that is a great uh uh, philosophy and, and I wish more people would subscribe to that too. So yes, because this this whole <laughs> you know you were talking about just the gener- the younger generation and mm-hmm. complain and oh yeah not want you know just no motivation to do anything yeah, yeah. <laughs> with, yeah. with your life it's like look after what I had happened to me I'll tell you right now things could be a whole lot worse. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yes. Oh, I worse. And when you when you can look at you can look at things through the glass half empty or the glass half full lens. Right. Yeah. And, and your and attitude is going to be the make or break in most everything. We're all more blessed than what we really think we are. Yes. And that that helps when, you know on your worst of days Absolutely. to look at everything that went right that day mm-hmm. instead of you know the one or the one big thing that went wrong. Because right. usually when you look at it that way, there's a lot more that went right than what went wrong. <laughs> yep, absolutely. I totally agree with you. Okay, so talking about Indiana Beach and the community, I know you strive, you know, to bring stories and storytelling to the Indiana Beach community. Are there any other, you know, contributions that you would like to make or see things happening in the future for Indiana Beach that have not occurred yet? Uh, we're making strides. You know, I, I'm really looking forward to the 100th anniversary of Indiana Beach. And uh, that's coming up here in, in 2026. So mm-hmm. I'm looking really forward to that. Actually, I'm working on a historical book about Indiana Beach. So I'm looking forward to getting that published and, and getting it in the hands of the Indiana Beach Nation to chronicle the 100 years of Indiana Beach. And, oh, and Wow. And what all the changes that have happened here at Indiana Beach. So I that, that's a big project, but I've got uh, some people who are helping me with that. So we're really looking forward for uh, having that as a kind of a uh, a legacy piece of what would be, be one of the pinnacle things that I want to be able to accomplish, you know, for the 100th anniversary is to have this book available to Indiana Beach fans. So uh, we're in the process of doing that, or I'm in the process of doing that. So it's going to be a great project. It's going to be a, a lot of work, but it'll be a labor of love. And, I, and I'm looking forward to that. That's exciting. And I'm looking forward to seeing the end product for sure. So um, looking at, you know, all your history with Indiana Beach from 1978 all the way up to 2022. Right. What impacts would you say that your connection with Indiana Beach have had on your life? Well, my life? Yes. It's made me appreciate. It's made me appreciate things a lot more. It's uh, again, like it's given me something to look forward to. You know, 
uh, it's a passion of mine. You know, if you don't have a passion in life, you know, um, a lot of people go their entire lives and not find out what their passion is, you know. And my passion here is, is Indiana Beach and helping to preserve the history of Indiana Beach. I want to be able to uh, have the park here for years to come so that uh, generations beyond me and my grandson can have more experiences here at Indiana Beach. You know, I want to go, and when I'm dead and gone, and I might, you know, have a little plaque here about at Indiana Beach about Don Hurd or whatever, you know, I want people to, uh, I want that people to see that and say, oh, we remember that guy. He, he's one that wrote this book, or he's one that, uh, you know, helped uh, keep the history of Indiana Beach. He's one that, that did the, uh, help start the museum here at Indiana Beach. So, you know, uh, that's what, you know, I, I, I want people to be able to see and, and be able to enjoy, you know, for years to come here at Indiana Beach, long after I'm gone, you know, and, and, and you know, in the concession stands or the vendor things that I do here, we want to see those continue to grow and to expand as much as possible here at Indiana Beach. But again, we just want to keep Indiana Beach alive and vibrant and keep bringing the sparkle back to Indiana Beach where people could enjoy for the next 50, maybe another 100 years down the road. Okay, well, thank you for sharing that with us. Leaving your mark on the world, I, I really don't think you're going to have a problem with that one <laughs> being remembered. Before I even knew who you were, I knew your name, oh, yeah. but I didn't really know who you were. <laughs> people were telling me, you got to go talk to Don Hurd. And I'm like, who's Don Hurd? And then I, I looked you up on Facebook and I started getting just, you know, increasingly more <laughs> interested in and intrigued. Right. Well, and um, I think you're going to leave a legacy on that park that is going to be remembered. Well, I hope so. But again, it's not after all, you're gone. I appreciate that, Kim, but it's not all about me. It's about no. the IB nation. Okay. We want, we yes. want this IB nation to thrive from years gone it's just not you know back in 1926 when earl spackman had the vision of building this little resort along lake schaefer you know or back in the day they called it schaefer lake and to where it is now so there's been a lot of people you know who've had a lot of um, influences on how indiana beach is today and i'm just hoping that i can be a small piece of that uh, puzzle you know as we go along and life is like a, it's like a puzzle you know there's so many bits and pieces that make up the, uh, the puzzle itself. And I just hope I'm, I'm a, one of those pieces of, of the Indiana beach puzzle that I fit squarely in there and, and make a, a beautiful picture about what Indiana beach is and, and, and what it's done for millions of people over the, over those 100 years. Well, I'm really, ho I'm really hoping after experiencing Indiana beach and having my kids there that when my kids have kids, we're able to do exactly what you're talking about right? Exactly. You know, and take them there. And cause that's one of the few places that I think could have given my kids and hopefully we'll be able to give my grandchildren right. a taste of what things were like for me when I was young. Absolutely. And, and you know, to experience the simplicity, mm -hmm. but the magic. Right. It, that goes along exactly. with it. We're, we're, we're not, there's other places that talk about magic, but we really do have some magic here at Indiana Beach. The nostalgia. You know, yeah. Nostalgia, Americana. You know, mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just a gosh darn fun park to come to. You can come and enjoy yourself and not have to spend, you know, life savings to come here. No. You can you come here for a day and really have a wonderful time with your family and yourself and, and get a lot of thrills and spills and, and again, create some memories that will last a total of lifetime for you and, and, and your family. Well, and something that's fun for me too is walking around the park and I know, um, you know, there's a, there's a, there are rides there that have been at other parks. Mm -hmm. um, one of them came from the old Coney Island. And I remember Coney Island right. from my very early childhood. Sure. Um, you know, so that's hoping I'm, I'm really hoping to be able to take, you know, not just my kids, which I've already done, but my grandkids around too. 
and, and share the stories. Right. And, and it's podcasts like this, you know, the, the Coastal Challenge people, you know, they're doing a great service, not just for Indiana Beach, but but amusement parks as a whole, you know, and making it, uh, letting people be aware of the, the fun industry. And again, at the same time, we can educate people and help them overcome their fears and help them build their confidence at the same time, you know, and, and, to, and to metamorphose themselves into, into something, a better person than what they thought they could be. That's wonderful. And we're all working together to, to, to educate each other. Yes. Okay, so our next question centers around advice. And I mean, this can be advice about anything. This can be advice about, you know, overcoming fear, mm-hmm. can be advice about, you know, rides or amusement parks, or just advice about life in general. What advice can you give to those who are listening? I would say probably the biggest thing I can tell people is to enjoy what you're doing. Enjoy life. Don't, you know, there's a lot of little things here, you know, don't sweat the small stuff. You know, those things work out themselves, you know, but just love yourself, who you are, and just be the best person that you can be. Yes. It sounds like a simple formula, you know, and a lot of people struggle to, to, to be who they, they, they can be. But again, you know, find yourself, find your passion, you know, don't worry about the masses out there or whatever, you know, the negative Nellie's telling you can't do something, you know, Gosh darn it, if you want to do it and you see and you want to achieve it, then go for it. You know, don't let anything hold you down. If you see something you want to do and you want to try to accomplish, gosh darn, it, go for it. You know, don't don't sit around and say, woe is me or what don't be an Eeyore or whatever. Just go for it. You know, enjoy life. You know, do you know, do what uh, makes you happy. That's the thing. Do what makes you happy and don't worry about anybody else telling you whatever you know because yes. in the end, in the end you got to be the one that's happy with yourself and be at peace with yourself you know and and if you're okay with that gosh darn it you've done a great job then yeah and you know that's something i've had to really it's taken me a large part of my life to realize is it's completely fine to be who you are you don't have to be like everybody else because, you know, there's there's a pre- there, I mean, there's a pressure. There was a pressure, of course, you know, a lot of kids, most kids, I think, deal with it growing up through school. There's a, pre- you know, peer pressure to blend in with your peers. You're going to get laughed at. You're going to get made fun of, you know, if you're not like everybody else. You right. know, that's kids deal with that. But then one thing I see, you know, even in t- today's society is it, and it's not just you know, I guess, you know, what I do for fun or whatever. But when you look at even, you know, politics and that sort of thing, Mm -hmm. if you don't think like somebody, if you don't agree, you know, with somebody on certain, you know, political standpoints, right. Or, you know, if you don't like the way they think, there's all of this name calling, there's making fun, Mm -hmm. there's, you know, banishing you from social circles and all this different stuff. Right. It's taken me just a long time to come to the conclusion that if that's the type of people that I'm trying to fit in with, then I'm a lot happier being out of the box. <laughs> right. Absolutely. A- absolutely, Kim. You're, you're absolutely right. You know, we don't have to fit in their example you know whatever you know yeah. again, a lot of people will, if they see you're, you're starting to, to, to do some great things you know they're going to do everything they can to to uh, knock you down you know yeah everybody makes mistakes you know in life but it doesn't mean you know you have to pay for them for the rest of your life you know you know so sometimes good people make bad choices you know mm-hmm. it, it doesn't mean you're bad people it means you're human you know but Mm-hmm. Anything, just enjoy what makes you happy. Yes. Enjoy what makes you happy. And <laughs> if, you, if you can follow that philosophy, as simple as it may be, your, your life's going to be so much better in the long run. Now, everybody's not going to agree all the time, and that's okay. Right. We all like to do th- different things for fun. Absolutely. And for stress relief. And yeah. that's okay. You know, I have friends that like to go to the beach. Me, what? I'm at the beach for an hour. Uh-huh. And I'm ready to fall asleep. 
I get, I'm, to I get bored. I want to go do something else. That yeah. doesn't make the fact that they want to go to the beach wrong, right. but it doesn't make me crazy for wanting to go and ride all these coasters either. You know, <laughs> different yeah. strokes for different folks, live and let live. And I, I'm a supporter of people being happy. You absolutely, Kim. You're absolutely right. You know, and that's what I tell people all the time. Just do what makes you happy. When I go to high school classes to talk, you know, do what makes you happy. You know, yeah. the money will if you make money, the money will come. But again, money doesn't buy happiness. You know, no. you got it's, it's that internal feeling. You got to feel good about yourself and what you're doing, what direction you're going. And gosh darn, if you feel good about it, the hell with everybody else. You know, so. Hallelujah to that. Very well <laughs> said. I couldn't have said it any better. All right. So that brings us to our last question. All right. And our last question just centers around social media. Yeah. Where can people find you on social media if they would like to learn more about you or reach out and make contact? Yeah. I, if they want to learn more about me or, 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 or uh, criticize me. They, I, I'm on Facebook. You know that that's my biggest thing is Facebook. I'm you know, Don Hurd H U R D on Facebook. Uh, that's my biggest uh, thing that I, I'm on. I also have several Indiana Beach uh, Facebook pages that I, I've started or or belong to. I, I post a lot of things there, like the Indiana Beach Historical Center, uh, Boardwalk Ventures. Uh, you know, the Indiana Beach, past, present, and future. Uh, so th there's pages there, but my main one, my personal one, you know, is Don Hurd. I, I post a lot of my stuff there, and if they want to reach out to me or you know, they want to hear more about Indiana Beach or just about life in general, you know, I, I can, uh, that, that's where I can be reached. So Don Hurd at, at uh, Facebook, uh, uh, that's where they can spend request me or whatever, or send me a, a PM or a direct message. You know, I'm, I'm always willing to talk to people about whatever, you know, so uh, Facebook, you know, I never thought I'd be, you know, close to 5,000 friends on Facebook, but I am. And, and, uh, and it's just, it's just a nice family. It's a nice way to communicate, nice way to disseminate information. And again, preach the gospel about Indiana beach. Well, and I, I'll tell you, I thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. It's no question to me why you have almost 5,000 friends on Facebook. You have just a positivity that is contagious. Wow. Wow. And your love for Indiana Beach and talking to you and hearing your stories has made me love the park even more. And I'm even more excited to return <laughs> than I was after my last visit. Come, come after to listening to all of this so i can tell you some more stories and you can stop by and get a get an ib whip at uh which is a pineapple soft serve i can't say the other thing because it belongs to the mouth house that's where it belongs uh -huh. <laughs> they have they have more lawyers than i got so they got <laughs> all right well thank you so much it's been an um, honor and a pleasure talking to you today i appreciate the time and, and effort you guys do in putting this whole thing together the uh, Coaster Challenge, uh, again, it's a great, great service you guys provide to the, the amusement park uh, uh, enthusiast uh, uh, nation or whatever. And it's just a, it's just a great thing. And, and again, it's, it's amazing uh, that the metamorphosis you've done and what David's done, it, it, it does help people. And, and coasters are a cure for a lot of things. So, we, again, thank you for allowing me to come here and, and talk to you today. You're welcome. And thanks again. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And if you want to see more of us, we upload every Friday. And check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all at Coaster Challenge. Links are in the description below. Thanks for joining us here today.